Hey guys, today I've got the camera rig hanging from the ceiling and we're going to check out the power consumption graph and kind of go into detail and show you guys what it uh, what it does and um, what you can use it for. We're going to go through um, also the power consumption that you'll see uh, using the uh, the heat system versus driving without the heat system. So let's dive into it. I've mentioned the power consumption graph in previous videos, but it's always been a separate uh, part of a different video. So today I wanted to just go over what the graph uh, says, um, how to use it. So uh, basically what it is, is you go into uh, this tab, hit energy, and it brings up the power consumption graph. Now on the power consumption graph, you've got three different scales. You've got five miles. Now what that represents is the last five miles driven. You've got the last 15 miles driven and you've got the last 30 miles driven. Now, uh, just for sake of detail, we'll go ahead and go to the five mile. And uh, well, let's start at 30 miles. This might be more interesting. So if you notice, there's a few, um, it's set up as a grid and there's a few prominent lines on the grid the first line is right here it says rated that line there that's 225 watt hours per mile that is what tesla rates the car at so that solid line there is 225 watt hours per mile now above it you see the dashed line that is the average uh watt hours per mile that you've that you have um, consumed over that specific scale. So you'll notice that it says 374 watt hours per mile. Now watch when I change the scale, that changes. <clears throat> 342 watt hours per mile. And then in five mile range, that changes to 407. And that's because it's averaging only that block of duration. So the last five miles that I drove last evening was very inefficient. I was using the heat quite a bit and accelerating a little bit. I was just sort of testing the traction on the road, so I was throttling it hard. Uh, over a 15-mile distance, that's pretty efficient. But then you go back over a 30-mile range, and the efficiency drops again. So one of the things that I find fascinating about this <clears throat> is you can see how much, let's say, the, the heat is using and um, because you can drive with the heat on or with it off and you can see as you're driving this scale moves to the left and you can see it go up and down and um, now e right now it's set for average range there's instant range average range what average range is is the average over that duration instant range is as you're driving what is your projected range for just exactly the consumption that you have right at that moment. So here you see um, that over a five mile range, I'm getting over a five mile distance, I'm seeing 407 watt hours per mile. Now, if I continued at 407 watt hours per mile, my projected range would be 163 miles. Right now, I'm charged, I have 283 rated at the at the 225 watt hours per mile that the car is rated at I should have 283 miles of range at that charge level however I'm averaging 407 watt hours per mile not the factory's 225 which as a sidebar the 225 watt hours per mile is an estimate based on summer use modest driving in summer use so but at 407 watt hours per mile, they're projecting not 283 miles, but rather 163 miles of range. So that's very important. So I'm, what I'm gonna do now is start driving and you guys can, um, can get a feel for how this works. I'll turn the heat on and off. Right now I'm gonna go ahead and shut the heat off and drive around for a while with the heat off. And then I'll drive around for a bit with the heat on and we can see the difference. So. Let's get to it. Oh, and it is four degrees Fahrenheit today. So that's what maybe, uh, oh, I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. Maybe 15 below Celsius or something like that, but I'll figure that out for you. It's 
pretty slick out today. You can see we've seen two people already stuck in the snow. So, you need to be careful out there, people. It is just four degrees Fahrenheit. We did get some snow last night, so it's a little bit on the slick side. So you can already see that my watt hours per mile has been pretty reasonable. At one point there was a peak that was just acceleration, but uh, there's the 30 mile scale and um, we've driven 1.1 miles today and uh, you can see that it's pretty low. So there's 15 miles, but there's the five mile scale. So I left uh, right about here and you can see that it's it's lower than the rest already. So, and my projected range has gone up because my efficiency is better than what the average was in that last five miles. So again, I'll drive around for a while with the heat off and then I'll turn the heat back on and, um, and we'll see what the difference is uh, just by turning the heat on. I'm gonna go ahead and just set the cruise control. I did not turn on autopilot, partly because even though autopilot will work uh, in weather like this, um, there's the autopilot, it will work. Since the lines are, are a little bit sketchy, it will kind of dart left and right a little bit and just for smoothness sake, I'd rather steer. So, but I'll use the cruise control uh, just so I can uh, let the car monitor my speed. So anyway, again, you can see how low my, my consumption is and how my projected range is, uh, is really improving because I'm not using the, the heat and um, just climbed a little bit of a hill and accelerated there so it went up a bit. This can get very addictive uh, using this power graph, I must say, because for a data geek like myself, I love this kind of thing. And um, now watch what happens when I turn the heat on. We'll turn the heat on, make sure that it's cranking nice and high. Watch what happens to the consumption. There we go, you can see we're driving downhill right now, and yet the, uh, the power consumption is going up. We're about to climb up a, a hill here, so it's gonna go way up shortly. So you can see how high it is. Now again, I did just climb a hill, but um, it started to climb far b before I hit the hill. And um, we'll be going back down a hill shortly here as well. Um, so at this point, we are on a very flat level road, driving a, uh, a relatively consistent speed. And um, so we'll see what the average consumption is. Again, relatively level road, consistent low speed, but with the heat on. And um, so we'll, um, we'll monitor this. This road is maybe a mile or so long. Now we'll hit the instant range. So uh, this is the projected range that I would get out of my battery if I were to maintain this speed and this power consumption level. Now watch this, when I shut off the, uh, the climate control, you see how that is just plummeting like a rock because I just turned the heat off. Now it's kind of cool as um, using instant range, I'm slowing down now so there's energy being regen into the pack and you see how that, uh, how my energy consumption is going way, way down and my projected range goes way up. Again, that's the, that's instant range based on what I'm using right now. We'll go back to the average range, but as I slow down, you can see how much energy goes back into the pack. Very, very useful for when you're monitoring uh, how efficient certain roads are or certain um, routes that you take. Now watch this, I'll accelerate really hard so there was a good strong acceleration. You'll see that spike way up from that acceleration run right there. See how that's spiking upward? And now we are at just a, a cruising speed. Now we're climbing another hill, so you'll notice that go up again. There we go. 
it's pretty fascinating. When you go to the 30 mile scale, you can see what your trip has done on a broader scale. So I started the day right here. You'll notice I wasn't using the heat at all and it was my power consumption was low and since I've had the heat cranked the power consumption has gone way up so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the heat off again because it's it's warm in here I don't need it on and we'll watch that drop again now you'll notice since I turned the uh, the heat off again my range my range, projected range has increased because my power consumption has decreased. So I'm going to leave the, leave the heat off uh, for a length of time here. We'll turn that on to the longer scale. slippery right here very slippery I my car is moving around and you can see another person has spun out there's their tracks going off the road Ooh, pretty precarious right up on the belly there it is very very slippery here looks like this gentleman spun out as well so I'm gonna floor it just to see watch the traction control and the limited power and now I'm gonna hit the brakes and uh, so yeah, the, the it's floored, that's limited power and traction control's kicking in as I slide around. It is very, very slippery and icy right now. You can see the traction control. I'm this is it the pedals to the floor, that's as fast as I can accelerate. The traction control's kicking in because I'm just wheel spinning. It is super slick out here. Now you can see when I turned the, the heat off how we have gotten um, much better power consumption uh, since the heat has been turned off. I'm accelerating now so the consumption will go up just during acceleration. Also I'll be going at a little bit higher speed here so um, the consumption will be a little bit higher again. So you can see here where when I left this morning I had the heat turned off and this was my power consumption with the heat off then I turned the heat on and that was my consumption with the heat on and now I've got the heat off again and this is my consumption with the heat off uh, it, it is really fascinating to look at now I'm going to compress this a little or I'm going to expand this a little bit and go to the 15 mile scale and you can see this is where I left my house with the heat off and then I had the heat on for a period of time now the heat's been off again so the um, the heat system also the air conditioning does kind of a similar thing in the summertime uh, it really uses a whole lot more power uh, with the air conditioning on in the summer as well so my side window is beginning to fog and the windshield is just a tiny bit so shortly I'll be turning the um, the heat back on at least for a couple minutes if for no, for no other reason than to thaw the windows down. There were a couple more cars. Uh, I don't know if you guys could see that on the camera or not, but there were a few more cars in the ditch over there that we just passed. It's very slippery today. So there you go, with the heat on, you can see my, my power consumption increasing again. Thanks for watching this video on the, the power graph in the car. Uh, it was probably seemed a little bit spotty uh, while I was driving the the road was more slick than I realized and so I wanted to make sure that anytime I was filming the, the talking about what I was filming on the screen and, and that that it was I was able to really pay attention to what I was doing on the road so uh, the power graph uh, is a wonderful feature of the car it is um, it's a powerful feature really if you want to monitor what both the HVAC system is doing and what your driving habits are like. You can monitor driving at different speeds and watch the energy graph. So it really is a wonderful thing. So anyway, if you guys have any specific questions on it, something I didn't cover regarding the energy graph, go ahead and ask me in the comments section below. I'm more than happy to answer whatever questions I can. So anyway, thanks guys. Have a great day now. Bye-bye.